to my eye, like any young person, polydrug, I mean, not any young person, but a, but, but a young person who gets deeply into this, yeah. you're talking about multiple diagnoses, multiple drugs of abuse, poor prognosis, complex case. You had to testify in court uh, about his care. What did you say there? Um, both I and the psychologist that, that also treated Ethan throughout this both testified that, um, well, personally, I don't believe in an affluenza diagnosis. We both know that's not a clinical diagnosis. There, there's no, there's um, no affluenza in any diagnostic manuals. <laughs> that was a BS hired gun, you, d d reaching for yeah. straws to try to defend this guy in court. And, 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 but, Some crazy um, defense attorney, Lisa, got a hold oh, of it. Boy. I'm just with, saying. With, in, in Ethan's case, as with almost every young person I see that commit this level of crime, you know, he was uh, brought up in a very traumatic traumatic household, you yes. know, and, and uh, the defense testified and I testified as well um, that he witnessed physical abuse between his parents back and forth yeah. um, and that he was himself the victim of emotional abuse um, and throughout his childhood. So he okay. suffered from very tra traumatic childhood and then he started to self-medicate with that at a very, at a very young age. Yeah. Now, Judy, people are going to look at Jameson's explanation there and go, oh, you're defending this guy. You're, we're not defending him. We're just looking at how you end up in the condition that this kid was in. Absolutely. And his brain development was destroyed disrupted multiple times, not only from the emotional trauma and abuse, but also from all of that early drug use yep. and binge use. Okay. It's going to change your neurodevelopment. So, there we go. There's the story. It's polydrug addiction. It's polydiagnosis. It's trauma. These are treatable conditions if somebody's properly motivated and you get the family all involved. But that wasn't the case in this man, young man's um, situation. Actually, right after, so, so we treated Ethan during July and August of 2013. Um, that's public information. And, and during that time, his family was actually very participatory. Well, they did, um, both yes. mom and dad. Uh, both mom and dad, um, for only 60 days though. And, and, and we don't think that was not nearly long enough for, for, the, for the length of his history. Right, this would um, be like six months to a year. Of treatment. Exactly, yeah. precisely. And so then he had to go back to Texas by court order to, to, to do the case and then unfortunately we were not allowed to treat him post the court case and he was sentenced to in my opinion a very substandard mm -hmm. uh, treatment facility yeah. a state operated facility in the state of Texas which has you know multiple violations of, of abuse going on with inside of it and um, so things and it, was, it was also then very close to his family um, who as we know through through time has been his enablers um, and yeah. so in, in my opinion he should have gone back out of state uh, for at least a year two three years and been been able to, to right. get on his own so, feet. So Joseph